morning, I'm here. Let me tell you why I'm still standing. Let me tell you why I serve a big God. Let me tell you why he's been good to you. Let me remind you why you're still sitting in that seat instead of going somewhere else. Let me tell you why this morning. Because a lot of the times we get caught up in routine. A lot of the times we get caught up in the motions. Storms come, beloveds. They come. But as we read our word from the old to the new, speaking of testaments, God does not change. You got to understand that when you're standing up here, this is why the, the men of God and women of God, they come up here, they say, we can see everything. We see the lack of attention, the phone things. I'm asking you this morning to put all, all, all devices down and hear what the Spirit is going to speak to your spirit this morning. Because some of you are tired this morning. Mm. Some of you are weary this morning. And the Bible says never to grow weary of what? Well done. Doing good. Who's good? Jesus. Jesus. So don't get weary of Jesus. I had a conversation. I'm going to, I know you're there. I'm going to ask you to play a song in a minute. Um, two things that I want to share before I get started that go along with what I'm going to be speaking about. Tithing. You know, last month, my spirit grieved. And I'm not saying this to, you know, I'm saying this because some of you sit in this, in this chair. My spirit grieved because I was working a lot, but in my business, it's called the 30-day payout. They have 30 days by law to pay me. So I had nothing to give. And when the basket was going by, you know, it grieved me that I didn't have nothing to put in the basket. That there was nothing coming in, so I had nothing to give out. Yes, there was money there, but I had nothing fresh to give out. And, and I showed my wife, I said, you know what's bothering me? And she said, what? I said, I feel like, man, I, I want to give, man. I want to give, not to repay him, but in a way to say, been good, man. Amen. You've been good. Never grow weary of giving. Never grow weary of telling people that Jesus loves them. The second thing, before we get into the words, I was speaking to my mother. We're going to get a little personal this morning. Is that okay? Amen. Um, and, and, and she's depressed. She's in a nervous breakdown. She's 85 years old. The flesh in me wants to run. The man of God in me says, stand still right. and trust. I have her. Amen. And I just began to, uh, uh, about a 45 minute phone call, I begin to remind her just how good God's been. Yeah. There's no reason for us to sit in these seats and be depressed. There's no reason for us to sit in these seats and be isolated. There's no reason for us to sit in these seats and feel sorry for ourselves. God has been good. To us, I began to tell her, yes, it may not be the way you want to see it right now, but look at back at all the wars that have gone, and look at how many victories yeah. you have. Right. Look at the one that's standing, in, uh, 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 you're listening to on the phone, that they offered life that he was never going to get out. Wow. Look at the one that was in the front pages and on the news and all these other things. I don't tell him, talk about those things because that man's dead. But she knew. I said, look at that. He's been faithful. And he'll continue to be faithful. If you can play that song, because I have Pastor Sal there, so I know he knows it. And I know Jerry knows it. You're more precious than silver. More costly than gold, that one. The more that you are. The reason why I'm picking this song is sometimes we got to go back. Pastor Mario sit up there and said, you remember this song when they play something older? Those old songs, man, stir up something inside of you. Because we sit here and we listen and we get caught up in emotion. Don't pay attention to them. They're, gonna, they're professionals. They're going to get it together. Amen. Pay attention to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And if they don't, it's okay. God will have his way. But some of you this morning are sitting in these seats and you don't actually know why you're there. You don't 
know why. You know you're supposed to be here. But you don't know why you're there. Life has just got you by the hand. Remember that commercial? Same place, same place. Same time, same time. 8.30, 8.30. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Wednesday, okay. But there's no, no hunger. Remember when you were hungry for Jesus? Remember when this statement right here just meant so much? Because you didn't know about love. You had forgotten about love. The world had corrupted that word love to their selfish motives. And God in the last year has been restoring the word of love and he's restoring and letting you know though it's a true and it's a genuine and it's a pure feeling Amen. that comes from my hands. People have told you they love you but they hurt you. People have told you they love you and they let you down. And Jesus is saying, don't worry. And I'm going to show you in the word about that. Worry about me and where I have you. Jesus loves you. But make it personal this morning. Jesus loves me. Amen. Tell yourself this morning, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. All messed up. All half baked. All one step in and one step out. He still loves you. He knows that you don't get it together. He knows that you probably argued this morning. He knows that you're not a perfect father or a perfect mother or a perfect wife or a perfect husband or a perfect disciple. He knows that. And he still loves you. That's the message. Grace is Jesus and Jesus is love. Amen. Sometimes we forget that. You got it? Let's go. Let's stand this morning. Listen to the words if you don't know it. Because at one time when you walk Honesty is the best policy, Lord. And this morning, God, 
Continue to have your way this morning, God. Continue to speak to the very depths of us this morning, Lord. Because our desire, God, is change, Lord. Growth, God, in you, Father. That we would make you look big in somebody else's eyes, God, through us, Lord. In Jesus' name, and the church of God says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. This morning, you may be seated. Let me tell you why. If you could turn with me to Luke 23, starting with verse 32 in the NLT, please. God gave me this scripture. And because 830 service is a smaller service, and it's mainly the leadership, I'm not going to go through a lot of scriptures this morning. I know that you know them. <laughs> Amen? But I'm going to speak to something. I'm going to speak something this morning that is necessary. 32, not 22. Something that's very necessary because we have to remember why we're here. It's not because you have a problem or things in your life or just kind of took a curve or somebody come and flip your world upside down. That's not why you're here this morning. Amen? Somebody called me last night and, and they were texting me and texting me and texting me and, and I, I, I said, you know, just call me, man. I'm not a texter. I may give you one or two, but if you send me a paragraph, I'm not even going to read it. It's too long. <laughs> Amen? And they're texting me and texting me and they're saying, man, they shot my friend and he's not saved and and this and that. And I said, call me. And how many know that you can be the most spiritual person, but when somebody gives you that kind of news, what do you tell them? Amen? And I just told them, remember the promise that God will work out all things for the good. I said, you need to begin to lift up that family. You need to begin to stand on his promises and his goodness. You need to remember why you're here Amen. this morning. And some of you, things that might have been upside down, things might not be the way you want them to be. Things might, you know, have, have seen it maybe a little unfair. But you got to understand why you're here this morning. It's not because of the situations in your life. It's not because of the problems that you have. It's not even because the enemy banging at your door. It's simply because Jesus loves you. Amen. It's simply because he's been good. And that all things that the enemy tries for bad, he'll turn around because he loves you. Amen. You just need to open your eyes and see what is it that he's doing and why is he doing it. Sometimes I told somebody the other day, you only want to do it your way. And yet you expect a different outcome. But you still want to do it your way. And you get mad at everybody that tells you anything different. Can I get an amen? amen? How many know we like to do things our own way sometimes? Yeah. Amen? <laughs> or we like to hear what we want to hear. Yeah. And if you don't tell me what I want to hear, then I really don't talk to you. I kind of stay away from you. Oh. Amen? amen? But let me tell you why. This morning. Because Jesus wants the best for you. Yeah. Jesus wants to love on you. The word of God reads, two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. Let's stop there. Expository, I guess they call it. We're going to kind of go sentence by sentence right now, and then we're going to dive in, and then we're going to close up. Amen? Amen? I promise I won't be long. I got a person in the back that's got an overtime sign. Amen? <laughs> I read this <laughs> And it reminded me of how it was when I walked through the doors. How I had to understand why. When the, I'm not talking about Southwest. I'm talking about when I walked through the, through the doors of the Lord. And I had to understand why he had called me. Why he loved me. Sometimes... We don't even love ourselves. So how, how do you expect to accept somebody else's love? Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? 
And that's why some of us buck, because we don't think very highly of ourselves. Mm. Amen? Amen? And we blame ourselves a lot when things don't go right. Can I get an amen? amen. Well, if I would have only listened, if I would have only done this, it doesn't really matter. It happened. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. Amen? amen? But I remember when I walked through the doors, and I began to sit there, and everybody that I started to believe in was falling left and right. Now, if anybody had an excuse not to come to church anymore, it would have been me. Some of you know my story. Everybody. And we think we have it bad. We got it good. Amen? Amen. Everybody around me was falling. I was like, God, everybody that I put my trust in and believe in, they're leaving. And not in good terms. They're letting go of what you've given them. I don't want to let go of what you gave me. Sometimes today, in today's present time, I got it just by the, the tip of my fingers, it feels. I don't want to let it go. It's taking everything in me to hold it. Have you ever been there? Amen. But the Lord told me way back then, learn to put your eyes on me, and then you'll understand why. When you put your eyes on somebody else, then it's always going to be bad, because nobody's ever going to meet your expectations. Oh, come on. Next verse. When they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals also were crucified, one on the right and one on the left. Next verse. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Father, in the name of Jesus. Continue, God, to speak and have your way this morning. In Jesus' name. We're not going to go any further. We're going to stay on that scripture right there. Because this is why I stand here today. And my God and my Savior would have not stopped and said, forgive them for they know not what they do and show me the perfect example of forgiveness and of love. I could have never done anything. He was being mistreated. He was being unfairly accused. He was being neglected. He was being talked about. He was being all these things and yet he showed us by the prime example, forgive them God. For they know not what they do. Sometimes we don't know the person next to you doesn't know what they're doing and how it's hurting you. Sometimes they don't understand by the look or the comment or the things they've said are really beating you down. They don't know. But Jesus came and he said, listen to this, everybody, because I know all of you have gathered. And I'm speaking to leaders this morning, he said. I'm speaking to the, the elders of the synagogues as they're all gathered around. And listen to what I'm going to tell you this morning. That I need my father's help. Because I'm not able to do this. Let me tell you that you can't do it on your own. That you need your leaders. You need a discipler. You need advice. You need guidance. You need your pastor. And what's more importantly, you need God. Amen. To get you where you're going to go. And he said, listen to this, man. I'm all messed up right now. My dad wants me to die for you and I don't want to die for you. But because the love of the father... To do his will. This is why I'm here. This morning ask yourself. Why are you here? Why are you here this morning? And he says to him. He says you know listen. I'm going to teach you guys something. Look how good God is. In the midst of all hell breaking loose. In the midst of anything. That could be bad. It couldn't get any worse. He says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When was the last time this morning that you were able to say, forgive them, for they know not what they do? See, you can talk about grace, and you can sing about grace, and you can speak the word label of grace, but do you forgive? That is grace. Amen. I don't think you heard me this morning. Pastor Mike has been, 
boom against religion. This morning, boom against religion. I'm speaking truth this morning. I can bring up a whole bunch of things. Scriptures, I mean. But we don't need to go any further because it says Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. He wasn't speaking, my brother. I heard this yesterday. I'm going to use it. He wasn't speaking from his wounds. Too many people, too many Christians are speaking from wounds. Wow. Oh, my. He was speaking from scars. Let me tell you this morning, your scar, instead of you trying to cover it up all the time, it has a story to tell to edify God because God's the one that healed you. Amen. Some of us, and because we're in leadership, more me right here, I'm going to say there's no children. They got those want to wear long sleeves. I wear long sleeves. Because I'm embarrassed when they draw blood and they see track marks on my arms. But there's a story to tell. Because Jesus is the only one that set me free. Amen. And Jesus said, if I go talk to you right now, out of my pain, if I talk to you right now, out of my wound, Come on. I'm going to be no good to you. Mm. Because I'm hurting right now. I'm feeling things that I haven't felt before. I feel like giving up. I feel like I have no true friends. I feel like everybody that I get close to talks about me. I feel like all I've done was lend a helping hand out and everybody keeps slapping it down. Does it sound familiar? That's how much Jesus loves you. This is why we're here. That scripture, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. Because the love of God hasn't been taught and explained. Because the scripture hasn't been revealed in the right way. Do you know that you can go to church all your whole life and still not understand the word of God? Amen. When you know that you're in tune with the spirit, things like this just jump out to you and they make a whole new meaning. You're going to preach a whole message on one scripture right there. Because this is the condition of the world. They don't know how to forgive. Mm. Many are called, but few are chosen. My brothers and sisters, you are chosen this morning by God to forgive. Can I get an amen? amen. Forgiveness is so very important. See, Jesus had his life up to that point of sharing the word, performing miracles. Think back this morning like I told my mom. How many miracles have you seen? Mm -hmm. Amen? I look at some years in here of ministry. How many things have you seen change and you know it was only by God? Amen? Amen? Right. This is why. Amen? And Jesus spent his, his life sharing the word. But let me teach you something this morning that we need to learn this morning. I said we. Because when you're preaching the word of God, you can't just point. You gotta involve yourself because it's, we're, we're, we're together in this, amen? Amen. And he said this very thing. Sometimes words aren't enough. Jesus had said all the right words. But it was his example that made a difference. Our example makes a difference. The world says words are a dime a dozen. Exam exampleship is heavenly. Did you hear what I said? I said exampleship is heavenly because it's only through the strength of God that we're able to be an example. Amen. Amen. I had a guy, a, a friend from Alabama that used to say, I hear what your mouth say, but what you really say. Oh. <laughs> Amen. He used to always tell me that. Man, dark Alabama guy. Amen. 
And he said, and he would do the way he would talk. But he would say that. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I didn't never hung out with people like that. I'm sure you don't understand your language, your lingo, or whatever you call it, but I didn't hear what you're telling me. I hear what you say, or what you really say. <laughs> and that's what Jesus said. That's what they said. I hear what you've been saying, but what are you really going to say? When the rubber meets the road. Because if you read the following scriptures, we don't need to go there. They said, this is a man that said he's the Savior and can't save himself. Let's mock him. How many times have you been mocked for your faith? I told somebody yesterday, have you ever felt stupid for believing? And I asked you that question this morning. Have you ever felt stupid for believing? That's a bold statement, huh? But it's a real statement. Because everything around you tells you that you shouldn't be believing. But there's a God inside of you that says, hold on. There's a God inside of you that says, this is why I called you. There's a God inside of you that says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's right. Amen. It's important that we're not so quick to speak. A whole bunch of people like to say all the right things, especially when the, the pastor's around. Oh. Yeah, bah, bah, bah. That's why I sit next to him and say, hey, you want to go up there and talk about the turkey? Because then you're going to get a good, better response. Why? <laughs> why does it have to be a better response? There's a dying community out there that needs help. And one person cannot make a difference. One person cannot change anything. But a family of God can reach the lost. Amen. Amen. I can say this with freedom up here because he would tell you the same thing. Don't do it because of me. If you do it because of me, you're going to be hurt all the time. Mm. Right. Do it because God's asked you to do it. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Forgive them for they know not what they do. See, we look at this illustration and we know the story and there's a few things that I want to pull out of this real quick. 8.30 service, you got to be on point. Uh -huh. Amen? Because they're there on you. i got five minutes in the back already. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the first thing he did was he set an example. When I tell you these points, I want, what I do, I can't tell you to do what I do, but I do self-evaluation when I'm sitting there. I may not write a whole lot on things, but I sure evaluate myself a whole lot. Because I'm not playing games. Amen? I'm not the perfect person, but in God I'm perfect. Amen? But my love for God is perfect. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. I'm not the perfect person, but my love for God is perfect. Amen. That's right. Because he has my everything. Amen. Amen? He set an example because sometimes words aren't enough. He also said, number two, is that he set the importance of prayer. I feel this morning that we have strayed away, some of you, from the importance of prayer. Amen? Amen. But if you see right there, he, when he was going through it, what did he do? He leaned to his father. He lets you know that not only do I need my father's help, I need communication. This morning he's giving you the perfect example that when it's hard, that when it seems pretty much impossible, when it feels like it hurts just too much, just call out to your father and your father will take it away. Amen. He reestablished the importance of prayer Amen. by saying, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. The third thing that he did as he communicated through his scars and not through his wounds. I heard this, somebody say this, they said that when, when he got, when he rose up, he said he went back and he had holes and they were talking about if he had holes, if he was such a perfect God and he was able to resurrect, why did he still have piercings? Why didn't he do some cosmetic surgery? Amen. I, you know, you know how people always have to say things, amen? Right. And, 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 and 
the, 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 the preacher said, hey. Because he had to show Thomas that what held him down doesn't hold him anymore. Amen. Wow. This morning, what held you down doesn't have to hold you anymore. That's right. Wow. God has taken it. And he has thrown it all away. And he has set you free. And he is telling you, this is why you're here. Because forgive them for they know not what they've done to you. But I know how to love you. I know how to encourage you. I know how to make it possible for you to do what you think you want to do. Because I'm on your side. And if I'm for you, who can be against you? Amen. Things may not look that great this morning. Things may not feel that great this morning. Things might seem just pretty bad this morning. What did I do to my life? How did I mess up my life? Where did I bring it to? It's okay this morning. Because what held you down doesn't hold you down this morning. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise him. My knee, but it's all good. It's in the process of being healed. Amen. That's right. I thought we were healed. No, we're healed. I'm just in the process of believing it all. Oh, amen. 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 What held you down doesn't hold you anymore. All you got to do is receive it. That's all you got to do. Don't keep doing things the same way you used to do them. Do them different. Amen? Amen? Accept a little guidance. Be willing to talk about your problems. Amen. You know how everything changes? See, when you start realizing that you deserve more. Yeah. Because God already knows. I said it many years ago. It isn't good enough for it isn't just good enough for God to believe in you. You gotta believe in yourselves. Because he believed in you all along. Amen. 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 That's right. Just wrap it up. This month is grateful. I'm speaking about gratefulness this morning. Amen. Amen. What holds us down doesn't hold us anymore. There has to be. somebody to be the mediator and Jesus Christ is our mediator Amen. and that is why we are here this morning yes. he's our mediator you know this we don't have to keep zapping mad for it for answers we don't have to keep swarming over Pastor Rosie or Pastor Mike as soon as the services are over lines of people got I need to talk to you I need to talk to you talk to God because I had to learn a long time ago that I have to talk I have to put my eyes on God let me say something even more personal. It's always the same people. 
that's, that's, that's. Amen. But Jesus. All right, I went a little necessary. Holy Spirit intermission. Amen. Had the holes in his hand. And he went back. The Bible says he didn't go forward. Hallelujah. 